Hey guys, by the end of this video, you're gonna have a ton of tips, tricks, and productivity hacks to increase productivity whilst working from home. Whether you always work from home or lockdown has forced you to change where you work, keep watching this video to become more productive, more efficient, get more done, and finish early for once. Sounds good to me, pal. Let's do this. Hey guys, Andrew and Pete, founders of Atomic here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, up until 2020, we always had an office to work from, but like a lot of people, we were forced to work from home. And you know what? We never thought we'd say this, but we actually really love working from home. We both have our own home offices and Andrew often comes round to mine because I can't keep him away. I mean, because we're really good friends and we always want to be around each other. <laughs> Now, when we first started working from home, we were actually quite nervous. We thought it was going to decrease our productivity, but actually what happened was the opposite. We found actually we became more productive. We found that working from home could actually give us less distractions, more time saved on things like the commute, and it's actually enjoyable. But you need to set yourself up for success because otherwise you'll just end up spending all day lying on the sofa. Shit's Creek is too good. Yeah. And then you gotta do the dishes and the washing and the laundry and then take another nap. <laughs> so here's five things you can do to increase your productivity working from home that we do now every day without fail. Thanks for being my hand model. There we go. Number one is to set up your workspace and then protect it and guard it with your <laughs> life. Whether you have a dedicated room for your home office or you're just working in the spare bedroom or off the kitchen table, you need to claim that working space. That is your working space. This is all about setting those boundaries between work life and home life. You don't want the two mixing and this dedication to this boundary of your workspace sets up that subconsciously in your head to get you in the right frame of mind. If you are working from your kitchen table, then make sure you clear away your laptop and notepad and all that stuff at the end of the day and have a clear setup in the morning as well. More on that in a minute. And in at number two, plan tomorrow today. The comma is important. This is by far our biggest productivity hack. And you know what, we've always known it works, but this year we've set ourselves the challenge of doing it every single day. And this dedication has been transformational. And it's simple, before we switch up for the day, we always just plan our agenda for the next day. And we do call it an agenda, not a to-do list, because we map out every single minute by minute, task by task, for the whole day. This allows us to start in the morning, get on with the very first task, we know what we're doing, we can just hit the ground running, and then we know that we've got time to do everything else in the day because it's all been scheduled into a specific time slot. And it's really important to have contingency time booked in every day as well. Because what's the alternative, Andrew? Well, the alternative, Pete, is pretty crappy. The alternative is starting the day with a rough to-do list, spending the first 10 to 20 minutes trying to like decide, okay, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do first? I'm feeling overwhelmed and just unsure that it's all gonna get done. That sucks. So plan your agenda, not your to-do list first, and then you can do point three. Which is to have a clocking off time. Yes, a clocking off time. <laughs> why does that sound uh, well, weird? I don't know why, it was how you said it. <laughs> <laughs> you can try to make the time that you finish each day consistent, but let's face it, life sometimes gets in the way. However, if at the start of the day, you already know what time you're gonna finish, that clocking off time, then you all of a sudden have this goal. You feel a little bit more motivated to make sure you do everything so that you can finish on time to get on with the rest of your day. And if you have something fun booked in for after you finish, then you definitely are gonna work harder during the day to make sure you finish on time, to make sure that you can go do that fun thing or not let other people down that you've promised to do. Part four is to have a morning routine. Now, there are some crazy people out there, and they are crazy because they profess to leaving the house and re-entering it, or doing like a walk around the block to mimic your walk to work. We aren't two of those people. However, we do have a strict morning routine that we do every single working day from when the alarm goes off. Things like walking the dog, doing a bit of exercise, doing some meditation, getting showered, that kind of thing. Is showering part of your morning routine? Yeah. Huh? Not yours? No. Could tell. 
Mm. But then also, when we first sit down to work, we have the very first 45 minutes planned out of our working day that's always the same. We hop on Zoom, we say hello, we catch up. And then we check and reply to any emails we need to do. We go into our Atomic members group and answer any questions that's happened in there. We hop into our team Slack to answer any questions that have been asked in there. And then we always start the first agenda item of work at 9 a.m. sharp. Having this routine is really good for productivity. It allows you to get into that at work mindset instantly and gets you ready to rock the day with a good start. Because you've done this a bajillion times every single day. You're in that routine, you know what's going on, and you can just get going with it. Before we go on to the fifth tip that has actually completely transformed our productivity, and a cheeky little bonus tip at the end too. If you haven't already, we'd love it if you could give this video a like, a share, and a little subscribe too. It would make us feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. And don't you want that? Pete's feeling extra fuzzy, actually, because... He hasn't showered. Okay, let's talk the biggest productivity killer and how to slay it. Two words. Zoom calls. Zoom meetings. It's calls. Okay. Don't, don't ruin the vibe. <laughs> Zoom calls that go on too long, have no agenda, have no stopping time, have no point in existing, are gonna suck away your home, work, productivity. And here's how you simply fix it. Tip five is to take your Zoom calls out of your most productive working times. When are you most productive? For us, it's between 9 and 1 p.m. That's our sweet spot and for that reason we hardly ever take any meetings, any calls during that time. It's like no distraction, deep focus time. If we need to do a call, we will fit it in between 1 and 3 p.m. This is when our energy is flagging a little bit and actually speaking to someone rejuvenates us and almost forces us to put a smile on our face and be in the moment. And to make this even more effective, that bonus tip is to schedule back-to-back -back Zoom calls. Our default Zoom meeting length is 30 minutes and we'll schedule them on the hour and half past the hour back-to-back. -back. This keeps the meeting focused, it keeps the meeting productive, and if it's running on and you can see that you have another meeting starting in say five minutes time, you can politely and honestly say, hey, my next meeting has just popped into the waiting room. And it works like a charm for just keeping them focused and on track. We'd love to know your working from home productivity hacks in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that subscribe button to make us feel all nice and warm and fuzzy. He's been Andrew. I've been Andrew. See you next time, guys.